Hello. Hey there, how's it going? Hi, 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 how are you? How's everything going? Well, hello everybody. How are you doing? I hope that you are experiencing a beautiful day today. God bless you real good. Welcome to a uh, live I Choose Me conversation. We are live on Facebook and Instagram. And I am Leticia Brown. I am an author, inspirational speaker, and a coach. And I am so passionate about helping people grow and I'm here to help you to transform your thinking toward choosing you first so that you can effectively serve others. Please take the time to like, comment, and to share this message. And of course, follow me through all the social media channels. I appreciate you guys so much. And if you will, please visit my website at LetitiaBrown.com. Uh, there you can um, contact me to speak at one of your events and then of course my uh, additional content the videos are there um, and I am a, a coach so I love taking the time to have one-on-one -on -one conversations and helping people to master their story so please 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 feel free to visit my website and get in contact with me uh, I love to hear from you and we want to thank you so much for supporting what we do here by picking up your copy of Get Up You Big Fat Procrastinator and of course picking up some of the I uh, Choose Me merchandise as well. It helps us to get the message of hope across the globe. This whole platform that we're doing is about the I Choose Me message. And I Choose Me is about creating a lifestyle of balance for yourself by choosing to be emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially healthy first so that you can be of service to others. Remember that your life matters. It's okay for you to take care of yourself first because as you take care of others and you um, you do it effectively because you're taking the time to love you first. It's okay to love you first because quite frankly, if you can love on you first, then you can help other people. If you don't know how to love and take care of yourself first, how in the world are you going to help anybody else? Hi there. How are you? Uh, God bless you real good. And so thank you guys again so much. Well, you guys probably have noticed that today we're talking about building courage. Let's talk about building courage. This is one of those subjects that I have to basically put on courage <laughs> day being courageous is not for the faint at heart <laughs> I, when I say I have to put on it's like putting on the whole breastplate of righteousness and the full armor of God you know that's kind of have you have that's kind of what you have to do when you're dealing with being courageous and it's so important to have somebody on your team that is there to pat your back and to tell you keep going keep moving uh, stay motivated you can do it and that's what I'm here for you guys I'm here to encourage you to motivate you don't stop keep moving stay courageous and you'll be able to experience all of your dreams and your desires. And um, I love how courageous children are, right? Like they have no inhibitions. They will jump off a platform when they're baby babies, right? They'll do all kinds of stuff. And the reason that they have fear is because of us as adults that put the fear on them because of our inhibitions. And of course, rightfully so, because we don't want them to harm themselves because a kid will put their hand on a, a hot burner in a heartbeat, right? But as parents, as adults, we know that if you put your hand there, you're probably going to get burnt. So, but other than that, you know, um, making sure that we protect our children from uh, being harmed, it's really important that we continue to encourage them to be courageous, right? But let's just jump right into it. Uh, courage is, defi is defined as the ability to do something that frightens you. And according to Webster, uh, it is a mental or more strength, moral strength to venture, to persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. 
I remember when um, years ago, years ago, you know, our son is 27 years old now, but years ago, he uh, used to be afraid in his room and we couldn't understand what he was so <laughs> afraid of, right? So he, you know, had this baby bed. He was able to walk and talk and do whatever, but he had this baby bed where the side rails would go up and down, right? And every time we look up, that boy was jumping up off that bed and running <laughs> out of that room when it was time to go to sleep. And we couldn't understand what was going on. And I can remember my husband, Gary, standing around the corner, just waiting for him to jump out the bed so he can march him right back into his room, right? It's like all of a sudden you hear this boom. <laughs> and we knew it was Zachary who jumped over the top of that bed. And ran out of his room And we're like what's going on in here You know we blessed our house and, and we prayed over our home And we couldn't understand what he was so afraid of And if you see me moving side to side It's because I'm looking at my Instagram people over here And I'm looking at my Facebook people Over on, on this um, um, video Right And so anyway We we would hear him boom jump out the bed And my husband would be around the corner Waiting for him and we were asking the question, it's like, what in the world is going on with him? Why is he so afraid? And um, what we decided, don't, we're not telling y'all to do it. We're not telling y'all to do it. <laughs> but we got rid of all the stuffed animals that were in, the, in his room. And then we decided we're going to really, we, not only did we pray, but we ran to a scripture to help him and to pray over him while he's in the room. And it was from Joshua 1 and 9. We had created this banner from Joshua 1 and, 9, 1 and 9 that says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so we put that banner over him, So, and we continue to speak that. And guess what, guys? It worked. You know, it didn't take very long. He was not afraid to sleep in his room after that. And he still loves that quote, as you know today i think on somewhere on his body you know he's a tattoo guy he has uh, joshua one and <laughs> one and nine on his body and so for those of you who are familiar with the scripture maybe that you're not in the book of joshua uh this is the the, the places where um moses had had died and he didn't carry the the uh, people of Israel to the promised land and, and of course it became Joshua's job and so you can only imagine how much trepidation he had to have with taking on such a huge responsibility right and so the Lord told him three times in verse 6 it says be strong and of good courage verse 7 it says be strong and very courageous and of course in verse 9 as I mentioned have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage and don't be afraid I'm gonna be with you wherever you go and I love that scripture because um, it's comforting to know that when you are feeling stress, anxiety, trepidation, concern, fear, or what have you, that you can put on that scripture, speak it to yourself with affirm as, as an affirmation, and know that the Lord is with you. And maybe you need a courage yourself, you know, like Joshua did, like Zachary did, and you need to step out on faith because you want to do something amazing, right? I want to say to you, be strong and of good courage because the Lord will be with you wherever you go. <laughs> my husband and my daughter always ask us like, is this a Christian message? Or, you know, like, what's your audience? Y'all know that I love the Lord and I'm uh, aware that some people may not have a relationship with them and that's totally up to you. But I can tell you it's one of the things that have helped us to maintain our mental stability and sanity, right? And it is the Word of God that helps us to navigate life. Without it, I don't know where we'd be. <laughs> so, again, I want to encourage you to keep moving. Don't stop. And as you move, as you move and you take that first step, everything you need will present itself right on time. Your help will come. And so... Are you going in some new territory? Don't know. You might be. Are you having some new responsibilities? Right? And maybe you need courage to step out of faith. Step out on faith. Because you want to do something amazing. Maybe you want to buy a new home or 
I don't know, build new relationships, whether you're networking or building a love relationship. Maybe you're venturing into entrepreneurship or finding your dream job, or maybe it's about getting the proper education. And I hope y'all heard what I said. It's like, don't just go out there and get, you know, any old kind of education, but the proper education that helps drive you toward your future decisions. Whatever it is, guys, whatever it is, be strong and of good courage because the Lord will be with you wherever you go as you keep his word in your heart. And listen, guys, courageousness and fear, they're not the same thing, right? People who have courage, they act even in the face of fear because quite frankly, fear can paralyze you but not you beloved because you're courageous and when you're shaking in your boots you gotta still do it right <laughs> so I remember this uh, video I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen it it's a video of this little boy that was standing on the uh, side of the pool he was taking swimming lessons right and he was shaking so bad you could hear his little knees shaking and his whole body was like convulsing because of the fear of jumping into that water and what could happen if he jumped in that water right and his um a trainer was you know like i'm here you can do it jump i'll protect you you can do it and their arms are up and they're encouraging him and eventually he, he jumped and that's so awesome you know that's kind of how it is right it's like your knees could be shaking and quaking but your help will come right when you need it and I remember um, my kids were like that too they had to take the swimming lessons and their knees were shaking and quaking too <laughs> But eventually they jumped. And then afterwards, I remembered my son Zachary. Um, I remember, I almost remember the day that he jumped into um, a 10 feet body of water. He was at Splashtown, and I was like, wait, what just happened? How, you know, how did he go from taking these swimming lessons a few years ago to jumping in 10 feet? And that was just kind of awesome to see. And then I saw him take it to the next level. We were on this catamaran in Mexico and we were going snorkeling and then you know the boat stopped and he just jumped off the top of the boat we're like with no gear on nothing he just jumped out there in the water we're like what in the world just happened how is this boy so courageous how is he so brave you know to go out there and do it and it was just kind of awesome to see and then just a couple of years ago we were out there at um at um in lake conroe and we were on one of our uh, uh friends boat and some of the people jumped out there, their swimming suits. I'm, I'm not a swimmer. I'm not jumping out. <laughs> I'm not getting ready to do that. And then all of it, my son, son with me went went with me, and he jumped out into the water. I'm like, there's no bottom at Lake Conroe. It's like just deep, 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 sort of like the ocean, right? And he jumped out there, and you know, I just thought that that was extremely courageous. And then I remember this last story about Zachary. I was just thinking about how important it is to hear stories to help you to be courageous too. But I remember that when we sent him to Connecticut to uh, uh, play on this, you know, stay with this prep program for basketball, and the first time we took him, right? We're like, this is the play. This is how you do it, you know, just and walked him through what it's like to uh, fly. We were there with him, and I was making all the, my husband and I were making all the decisions, right? But then his next time around, he had to fly to Connecticut. And flying to C Connecticut starts with flying into New York. And then from New York, making your way to Connecticut. And I just thought, you know, it was so amazing that he was able to take that trip with courage, get on the plane. Uh, I, you know, I'm just a phone call away, helping to navigate or what have you. But he did it. And it's so amazing because he went from the boat to I think the train or the bus or whatever to Connecticut and found his way to the school. And what he's doing right now, because he was able to make that trip and to be courageous, now he's traveling all over the world and he can navigate any country. And we have no fear of his ability to get from point A to point B to Z or whatever he needs to do. It's just so awesome to see that. And so sometimes it's just important for you to understand that it's that you need to be able to navigate your way through your courageous stance right so 
with my son, we took the swimming lessons. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? And then through the swimming lessons, he was able to be more courageous to do more things. With my son, we took him to, you know, the airport and showed him how to get from, um, from uh, New York, from Houston to Connecticut through New York, right? And he was able to do it, and now he's doing great things with it. So it's important that we understand how important it is to properly navigate where you want to go. And I want to do it by using the three E's, and I call it the three E's as it relates to courage, or maybe even the opposite of courage. And the first one is the first E is efficiency. Right. So I had this conversation with uh, Tabitha, my daughter, the other day, and she was talking about this statistics class that she took because, you know, sometimes uh, people get real frustrated, especially with athletics or maybe with your business and you're, you know, looking at things not popping off <laughs> or you're they're not you're not experiencing the kind of success that you hope that you would. And so when she was in the statistics class, they talked about the importance of being efficient and being productive so that you can get your desired results through efficiency, right? And when you learn efficiency and how uh, to, to, to handle your business that way, then it's easier for you to gain courage. So years ago, I had this uh, volleyball team. Most of you guys know that I used to be a volleyball coach. I just retired this year. But I had this team years ago, years ago, years ago. And uh, it was almost 10 years ago now that I think about it, like 9 or 10 years ago. And this team had a level of talent. And we played against a team that was at the time number one in the nation. It was at the beginning of the season. That team was number one in the nation, and they were in Texas. And my team, I'm looking at them as our first tournament, and they're shaking and quaking in their boots. And I'm like, what? in the world <laughs> because it's my first time not practicing with them but being in a tournament and I was like oh man this is going to be a good tournament but they were so afraid because of the giants that were on the other side of the net so they were so afraid that their fear paralyzed them right that they couldn't move right so after the game I had this conversation with them, and a lot of coaches do this. So after games, they have, whether you win or lose, but especially if you lose, it's a long conversation that most people don't want to have so that you can talk about what you did in that game and what you can do to prepare for the next one. And so as we're talking, I asked them the question. I'm like, have y'all ever seen a dog fight? And all the girls are looking at me. It was about 12 or 13 of them. And they're looking at me like a dog fight. What does that mean? I'm like, have you ever heard of a dog fight or a cock fight? And I looked was looking at their faces and I'm going, do I tell them or do I keep it to myself? <laughs> because I knew that it was going to possibly freak them out a little bit, right? And of course, when we finally got around to what a dog fight was, that the, um, I'm happy, okay, I, what we, when we got around to fighting, uh, talking about what a, a dog fight was, you know, I could see the tears in their eyes, and I'm like, do I stop or do I keep pushing? No, I'm a coach. I'm going to keep pushing them and tell them what it's all about, right? Um, and so the question is, is that at the end, you know, I was saying that when the dog fight, there's two dogs and only one is going to come out. Which one are you going to be? Right, and the dog that can fight the longest is the dog that is going to be victorious. Which one do you want to be? You can choose today who you want to come out as the winner. Do you want it to be your opponent or do you want it to be you? Are you willing to fight for what it is that you believe in? Are you willing to fight with your teammates? Are you willing to fight to be a winner at the end, right? And then we started talking about things as it relates to efficiency. And one of the things we talked about was hitting efficiency. And we talked about here, girls, are the new expectations per your position, right? And then we talked about serving accuracy. And the idea behind it is if I serve over here against these top teams, then I can form my defense to prepare for whatever it is that they're bringing to us. And then if I am in the right defensive posture, then I can make an adjustment and make sure that I'm doing good things on my side. And then we talked about the setter's position precision and to make sure that she's on point and that her timing was impeccable and that her decision making was clear and focused meaning that if I were to ask her why did you make the decision to set that person that type of set she had a clear understanding and focused answer that would suffice the situation because we talked about it and we uh, trained over it and we talked about how important 
efficiency is. And the question was, is that when the ball is in your court, how do you handle it? Because the truth is, is that the other team, they're going to do what they do. They can't do anything to prepare you necessarily for what you need to do. So you need to decide how you're going to attack and how efficient you're going to be when the ball is in your court. And then how disciplined are you in your areas that you're responsible for, right? Why? Because you can't, again, do anything with what someone else is doing on their side besides trying to, they're trying to, you know, figure out what you can, what they can do to break down your system and making it work for them and vice versa. So we use the concept of efficiency to overcome fear and to build courage for that team. And yes, of course, they did an amazing job. <laughs> they were good. They were good. And um, they, you know, I renamed them. <laughs> Our new name was Junkyard Dogs. <laughs> we were now the Junkyard Dogs, the JYDs, right? And it was just really good to see them grow when we learned the concept of efficiency and how it could build courage. They felt comfortable with taking on any team. It didn't matter who it was. And I say the same thing to you, beloved. When the ball is in your court and you are making decisions for your family, you're making decisions for your own personal growth, and you're making decisions for your family's development, career and health choices, do you have the courage to be efficient accurate, disciplined, and focused so that you can experience the success that I'm sure that you want out of life. Again, do you have the courage to be efficient, accurate, disciplined, and focused so that you can experience the success, the success that I'm sure that you want out of your life? Got it? That's efficiency. And number two is being empathetic or uh, having moral courage. According to Corin Connect, they talk about the four uh, types of everyday courage, right? And um, so I have a comment um, that says, do you have another example for someone uh, who can utilize efficiency in their own life? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, so we're talking about maybe looking for a job. How about that one? That's a good one right and so i know a lot of people get pretty frustrated when they're looking for work and they're using the same system that everybody else is doing but there is some um, more efficient ways to go about looking for work right whether it is identifying the area that you want to be in you know um maybe you want to be in technology and maybe you want to be in project management maybe you want to be in you know, education, whatever it is, is identifying what that is, finding out, being efficient and identifying the organizations that have what it is that you're looking for, and then hit those places. So instead of being all over the place and fearful, you know, you have created a system for finding out exactly what it is that you want, but it is a matter of identifying what you wanted. And with this team, and with this team that we decided that we wanted to win, right? We decided that we want to uh, be an effective volleyball team. And so the same thing when uh, you're looking for work, it takes a lot of courage to go out there and talk to people that you wouldn't normally want to talk to. You know what I mean? It's like, so I've built out my uh, list of 10 people and now I need to get to these hiring managers. And as you are developing uh, your, your system, that helps with courage because when you're all over the place, that's where fear sets in. That's where stress and anxiety sets in. So you have to do your homework in order to experience the success that you want, but then also to build up on that courage. Thank you so much for that question. I really appreciate it. But anyway, so back to the four types of everyday courage, and I'm only going to talk about two of them. That is being empathetic and then more courage, which I believe that they go hand in hand. And being uh, empathetic, for example, is acknowledging personal biases and intentionally moving away from them. Empathetic, right? So Kanye, again, so it's acknowledging your personal bias, whatever it is that you believe in, and then intentionally stepping away from it. 
right? Moving away from it. And so I know this is a little bit of pop culture, I guess, that Kanye West during the fashion show, um, he just he and Candace Owens decided to wear a White Lives Matter t-shirt. And we know that that triggered a whole lot of people. Um, but, you know, we don't know why he does what he does, but, you know, he's made a decision to, you know, to wear the shirt, right? And for the people who are empathetic, toward the Black Lives Matter movement, right? After the George Floyd uh, killing while he was in police custody in 2020, which was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, especially when all the people from around the globe, they were in concert with the importance of needing some type of police reform. And then of course, um, other people who may believe that promoting the t-shirt legitimizes extremist behavior, right? So you can be empathetic to your bias or your cause or what have you, and then you make a decision to go away from it, go toward it or what have you. Having the courage to step away or move away from that concept or any concept are the persons that are involved in, for Kanye's um, Example, wearing the t-shirt or whether it is, you know, stepping away from anyone who you believe is promoting extremist behavior. It takes a lot of courage. And we're seeing that people who may have had a relationship with him, that they're stepping away from it. Am I asking you or telling you to step away? No. But when you're empathetic toward things that you have a bias toward or, or that you believe in, and that even if it's somebody that you love or somebody maybe that you followed, it takes a lot of courage to step away and move away from it and disassociate yourself from all of the rhetoric regarding it, right? And then on the flip side, there are others that believe that, yes, of course, Black Lives Matter, but so does everyone else. You know, it's the group that says, well, all lives matter, right? And so they think that Creating the Black Lives Matter movement is something that separates um, uh, separates people, and they have the right to have their opinion as well, right? And they have also the right to step away because they believe in y'all heard of it, you know? They were talking about Blue Lives Matter and all of that kind of stuff, right? But either side, it takes courage to be. Um, empathetic toward a, a a cause or a bias or something, right? You believe in it. And then if something is opposite of what your beliefs are regarding it, it takes courage to step away, right? And then, of course, having the moral courage is standing up and acting when injustices occur. And in Iran, we have the Masa Amini situation. This is the young lady who was arrested by the morality police for reportedly not having her head covered. And then she was allegedly taken into custody and then beaten to death, right? And so you have the uh, people who are protesting against it and uh, demonstrators that are doing all kind of demonstrating from um, burning their, the women burning their scarves, right? And uh, that they believe, just like with the George Floyd situation, not just like, but similar to the George Floyd situation, that we need, um, um, you know, police... Uh, uh, we need to reform the police departments, right? We need to do some great teaching on it or whatever we need to do. And then, of course, these women are, and it's men too, that are fighting against gender-based violence against women, right? And so um, in those situations where you stand up and you're actively involved, like that moral courage, that takes a lot of courage to stand up. And I, you know, for those of people who are protesting, those people who are demonstrating, and I, you know, would prefer it not be violent, right? But it's important for you, if you have more courage in those areas to stand by what it is that you believe in it, believe in, especially when there are injustices that are taking place. And in your home, I hear this all the time where you're with your family and with your friends and you might be having heavy discussions about different injustices uh, that are occurring across the globe, whether uh, it could be in the classroom, 
right? Situations that are happening in the classroom where people are talking about what is a woman, you know what I mean? Um, and then, you know, of course, what's happening politically for the last few years, it takes courage to stand for what you believe in, even in the face of adversity, but it even takes greater courage to walk away in those situations if you have to. I'm talking about in your home, because it's important to know that, listen, we can agree <laughs> to disagree. Me and my uh, sisters were having a conversation the other day, and uh, it was, you know, one opinion versus another opinion, but we're still kind of in there together. And at the end, uh, this beautiful soul, my sister says, so are we going to the comedy club or not? <laughs> I love that so much because there's a lot of uh, divisiveness that happens in homes and you break relationships with people because you have an opinion. And if those opinions are not the same, you don't agree with each other, it's okay to step step away from that conversation, but you don't have to throw the baby away with the bath. You know what I mean? It's okay for you guys to continue to develop relationship unless you're so against what they believe in and you have to walk away. Sometimes you got to cut people lose right but it takes courage to do that right so number three is embarrassment I believe uh, embarrassment is an emotional it's a third E it's a third E is an emotional state that you feel when you don't feel peace about something because you care about <laughs> what others may think about your decisions or maybe there are some real life embarrassing situations either way either way the fear of embarrassment will kill a dream faster than you can snap your fingers or blink your eye you guys agree with me the fear of embarrassment will kill a dream faster than you can snap your finger or blink your eye and the law of attraction for those of you who believe in it has a way of finding you where you are parade in embarrassment y'all know what i'm talking about right it's like i'm not gonna you know um wear this because i'm afraid that you know something will happen i don't know and then of course your fear will have a way of catching up with you and that something will happen right so there are people that you may have told that you know i'm gonna start this new business I'm going to venture out, I'm leaving this job, and you make this big, who you know, hurrah, hurrah about it, right? And then things don't pan out exactly the way that you hoped that they would. And you feel awful because of the embarrassment based on what you just declared to your family and friends, right? And so the embarrassment as did I say it yet? Embarrassment is a choice right yeah it doesn't feel good when you have expressed all of your you know um desires to the world which i say don't you know don't do that until you know where you're going <laughs> you ought to tell key people about your business but um embarrassment happens because you know that you may have uh said something to your family and friends and it didn't pan out the way that you wanted to so there's a, there's courage on both ends courage to be able to go out there and tell them it happened and courage to keep on going courage that if this job this situation is not working to push it to the side and let's you know uh be redirected and go on this path that takes a lot of incur a lot of encouragement right or how about Y'all who, you know, post these lovely pictures about all the places that you traveled with your boo thing and all this cute stuff about your, 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 your girlfriend or your guy friend or, you know, your fiance. And then all of a sudden things don't work out, you know, uh, or maybe they cheated. It takes a lot of courage to step out and show your face again in those situations, right? But again, embarrassment is a choice but it takes courage to get out there and do it another pop culture this is with the uh boston boston celtics head coach right where he stepped he was um in a long-term relationship with nia long the actress nia long and he stepped out and he cheated in that situation i can only imagine the conversations that they must have had i can only imagine what nia long was feeling which people get cheated all over the globe 
every day, every second someone is out there cheating. There's never a time where people are not cheating. Every second of every day, there's somebody out there that's cheating, right? And um, like I said, I can only imagine what she was going through. Like everybody sees it. Everybody's talked about it. I've um, moved across the, the the country to come and stay with him. I'm wearing my Boston Celtics shirt and I'm, you know, we got children and everybody's talking about me now. It takes a lot of courage to put on courage, right? And release embarrassment because being embarrassed and living in embarrassment really is a choice. You can choose to be embarrassed and you can choose to not be embarrassed. Now, do embarrassing things happen? Absolutely. Can you be embarrassed? Absolutely. I've been embarrassed plenty of times, right? But it takes courage to still step out. It still takes courage to move in the face of embarrassment, right? And teenagers, we see them do it all the time, right? They're like, I can't do this because it's embarrassing. But what they don't realize that not acting because of embarrassment is a state that once it's set in motion can ruin your ability to strive and accomplish great things. Why? Because now your new desire is not based on what it is that you really want, but it's stunted because you need everyone else's approval for you to move forward. Many of you guys can look back in time and you can say, when did I stop being courageous? When did I start caring so much about what other people think about me? When did I start forgetting about my dreams and only living up to the expectations of other people? It's probably back, back during your preteen, your teenage years, where you're like, I'm too embarrassed to do something. I don't want to go and write this, you know, uh, whatever on the do they call it blackboard or chalkboard or whatever. And um, I don't want to read out loud. I don't want to. Um, you know, present in front of people. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to because they're going to look at me. They're going to look at the way I'm dressed. They're going to look at the way I talk. They're going to look at the way, and look, do you understand what I'm saying? And then eventually, like I said, that they don't realize that not acting because they are afraid of being embarrassed is a state that you don't want to be in and it can ruin your ability to ever strive and accomplish great things. So we need to take off embarrassment because as I mentioned embarrassment is a choice it's a heavy choice doesn't feel good I'm not saying that you're a bad person if you feel embarrassed about anything because it takes a lot of courage to move forward when it feels like all eyes are on you and what I would encourage you to do is really weigh the cost when making some of your decisions that you believe that will take a lot of courage to do, right? And you have to think about how will it affect your bottom line? How much will it cost? Say for instance, like I'm getting ready to build a new house or something, you know what I mean? You know, how much time will be involved? How much energy? What kind of resources do you have? The people? Weigh the cost and think about how it will affect your bottom line. And as you're weighing the cost and, you know, creating that information, it's easier for you to be encouraged or have courage to continue to take those steps. Then you ask yourself the question, is this my goal or is this someone else's dream? Because a lot of times we make decisions because they belong to somebody else and they try to tell you what to do and they try to tell you how to act, right? But the truth is, is that you have to ask the question, is it my goal or is it someone else's dream? And then think it through and derive at an actionable plan to carry whatever it is that you have through, right? Because and uh, courage is not easy. But it's an amazing, an amazing skill set that will catapult you into the stratosphere. The stratosphere. Courage is not easy, but it's amazing, and it's an and it's an amazing skill set that will catapult you into the stratosphere. Maya Angelou said it like this. Courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. 
You can practice any virtue erratically, but nothing consistently without courage. If you are, you can imagine a boxer, it takes a lot of courage to get in that ring and know you're going to get hit in the face. Know you're going to get gut checked. You know, it takes a lot of courage to prepare to get in the ring, even when you know it's going to be difficult in that ring. And, you know, and if you're a, an Olympic athlete that's training, you know that it takes a lot where I'm preparing. Remember me talking about efficiency uh, with the team and, and develop an efficiency tactic so that you can have the courage to step out when it's time to be challenged, right? And uh, so uh, whether you are a boxer, you're an Olympic trainer, maybe you're starting a new business and you're releasing the security blanket of that job that you had once before, maybe you want to write a book or you want to start a podcast or maybe you need to audition to become a singer or an entertainer or you have to do some kind of uh, athletic tryout or maybe, just maybe, you're jumping into the date, dating pool and you want to develop some love relationships relationships, buying a home, or maybe, maybe, just maybe you've invented something, right? And it's time to show everybody what that is. Uh, or lastly, you have to present in the classroom or the boardroom. You could be shaking in your boots, but the person that is courageous is the one that will act. You'll do it. I know you will because you're courageous. And I want to remind you that just like uh, Joshua 1 and 9, didn't I tell you? <laughs> be strong and courageous. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to be there with you. And listen, every time a negative thought enters your head, preventing you from acting courageously, I want you to interrupt that thought with something positive. And you're going to do it over and over again until eventually those bad thoughts will begin to look for someone else who receives and acts on those negative thoughts. But it ain't going to be you. You're going to be positive. You're going to be courageous. And you're going to step in and do all the things that you have in your heart to do. Now, I have a homework assignment for you. I want you to take three things. Look, I did two. But take three things that require courage for you to obtain and I want you to think of the worst thing that could happen if you do it write it down and then think of the very best thing that could happen if you do it so you have three things that you know it requires courage I don't care what it is whether it is I'm gonna stick with writing a book like Y'all should have seen the stress that I went through trying to write, get up your big fat procrastinator because I was so scared. I was shaking in my boots. I was, you know, just scared that people, you know, wouldn't like what I'm reading about. And then now I have people that are buying the book and they're super excited about it and they are getting up and they're not procrastinating. They're stepping out on faith and making things happen. Whatever it is, take your three things that you know that require courage, um, that you need courage and think of the worst thing that could happen. And not writing the book is you go to your grave with that beautiful book on the inside of you and the world is not going to be blessed by what you had to offer them. Or, and I want you to think about what's the very best thing that could happen. Well, you could be a number one bestseller. You could change one person's life and then that one person can change a million per people's life. You never know. And then you make a decision of whether or not that that thing that you're looking into, those three things, that is it fruitful, beneficial, and critical to where you want to go in life, right? Determine that. Then you're going to create a roadmap to get you there. And in my book, Get Up Your Big Fat Procrastinator, I talk about the seven keys to creative organization for success. It's so dang on good, guys. It's really good. And it's an amazing roadmap that will help steer you in the direction that you need to go. It'll take the guesswork out of whatever it is that you're wanting to accomplish. And then, of course, it will help eliminate fear and then uh, raise up your courage <laughs> decimal. It'll go do, 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 do. <laughs> So you will have a lot of courage in it. And I like what Tony Robbins said. He said, stop being afraid of what could go wrong and start being excited about what could go right. Well, 
I hope I said something to bless you all today. Visit my website at LetitiaBrown.com or contact me through any other social media vessels for your coaching, your workshops, and any other training that you like. And I'm here to help you grow as a person and to help you to master your story. God bless you real good. Take time to share, comment, and much love to you. And I hope you have a fantastic day today. God bless. Bye-bye now.